Hello and welcome. I'm Kamla. We bring you interviews and conversations with technologists, entrepreneurs, filmmakers and other news from in and around the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest today is filmmaker Matthew Brown. He has a film out called The Man Who Knew Infinity, which is about an Indian mathematician, Srinivasa Iyengar Ramanujan. The film is based on a book by Robert Kanegal. The Man Who Knew Infinity stars Dave Patel as Ramanujan, Jeremy Irons as Professor Hardy, and the others in the film include Toby Jones, Stephen Fry, Jeremy Northam, Kevin McNally, and others. Matt Brown wrote the screenplay and directed The Man Who Knew Infinity. Here's Matt Brown. Welcome to San Francisco. Thank you very much. Very excited to be here. How did you find out about the book and about Ramanujam? Are you a math geek? I, I'm not at all. Um, I was actually visiting out in the Bay Area, and I was visiting my aunt down who lived in Carmel at the time, and she was a member of a book club. Um, I think it was about 2004, and she had the book, and I discovered it, and I had been intrigued by the Great War. I just read the book Birdsong, um, and this was also set during the Great War, and I um, I read the book and I fell in love with the human story behind it. Um, it's it's an incredible drama uh, between Ramanujan and G. H. Hardy, who couldn't have been any more different as people. Um, so that initially drew me into it, and then eventually, over the years of trying to get the movie made, I think I I also I also became to have a deeper appreciation for mathematics and and that element that perhaps I didn't look at first. Are you good at math? I'm absolutely terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the contribution that uh, Srinivasa Ramanujam made to math? Well, he's he was a pure mathematician. So it, it's interesting because at the end of the movie, we actually have a title card that says about his um, contribution to right now. They're, they're using his, um, his theorems to help understand how black holes uh, work. But that's never what he was about. He was a pure mathematician, and, and as pure mathematicians, they're really artists. Um, and that was something I became to have a deep appreciation for in, in learning about pure mathematics, what G. H. Hardy and Ramanujan did, where they were they were they were discovering problems that were um, they weren't practical. It wasn't like John Littlewood, one of the characters in the film, had he was a pacifist and he had to go away during the war and help try to use his mathematics to try to help understand ballistics um, in a practical sense. And these guys did not do that. And they never wanted their work to ever have find any use because they were always worried that that use would be used to hurt other people. So it, it's incredible that today that these same formulas, many from 100 years ago, from somebody who had no formal education to speak of, uh, who was just doing all this on his own. I mean, this is a man who discovered trigonometry at age 13, the whole field of it, and then goes into school and finds out that it already exists. Ramanujan discovered whole fields of mathematics that he, in his words, um, his goddess Namagiri would put on his tongue while he slept. That's how. And, and today, when talking to some of the leading mathematicians in the world, they say, you really can't find an explanation for this better than that. Isn't it amazing that... Um, without any formal education, he came up with all of this. And then when he goes to Cambridge, uh, all the dons, yes. uh, the professors there, uh, they uh, tell him, can you provide us uh, the proof and the, you know, how did you work these things out? And he just looks bewildered. I mean, it's played yeah. by uh, Dave, uh, Dave yeah. Patel, yeah. plays uh, Ramanujam. Yes. It's it was a it's a big it's an interesting argument to this day, really, whether or not um, proof was something that... Uh, it wasn't so much that he was trying to just say, you have to prove this because we think it's wrong, although in occasions it was wrong. But it was more that he didn't understand the process and the nuances of what it was perhaps that he was doing in places. And it, it did help them prove some of, some of the things that they were working on in a different way by applying rigor. And I think that's important for a uh, mathematical process to have rigor. But... I think Hardy also didn't know that Ramanujan was going to pass in five years. And had he known that, I think there's an argument to have been made that to just let him have continued to explore on his own and not worry about proof and let other people try to figure out this proof many, many years later. Because he was doing so much mathematics um, that it, to Hardy, the gentleman, uh, the Don at, at um, Trinity, who this, this movie is also about, um, he put himself at out of a hundred at a twenty, and he put Ramanujan at 
a hundred, and and Hilbert I think was at an eighty. But I mean, Ramanujan is just off the charts. So we've never really seen we we, we see uh, like fireballs like this once in a blue moon. You know. So, it's so why were you drawn to the story of an Indian mathematician? You're an American living in Boston and New York, you know, and uh, he is somebody that if you grew up in India, I'm from Madras, so we do know about him because I think if yeah. I remember right, he worked for the Port Authority. Yeah, the Port Trust. I, you know, I had, it wasn't so much anything more than it was just a human story. This is a man that um, he had, he, he made great sacrifice in order to follow his dream and to be understood. And I, I could, on a personal level, relate to the human drama that was going on. As a man, for him, a formula has no meaning or an equation has no meaning unless it expresses a thought of God. And he goes to Cambridge and he finally thinks he's going to be understood. And the person that he winds up meeting is an atheist. I mean, how can you, how can that happen, you know? And, and the person that he meets is emotionally unavailable to even see him as a person. Um, whereas, you know, he's left behind his wife and his family and his country, and he's given up everything to be here, and he's broken caste. Um, and it's just such an incredible human drama about the cost that comes when people wait out of fear to connect in their relationships. So for me, I, I, I think it, it, works, it worked to me on a, on a larger level of what was important about people opening up their hearts and to being able to recognize talent in places that it doesn't exist. And I think that's a universally compelling story that I hope comes out of this film that people will open their minds to being available to seeing talent so because um, it does exist it, it, we don't have universal education and we don't have um, we w at this particular time I think people's minds are retreating and, and closing off so I think it's a very um, timely story oddly even though I started this 12 years ago but you know it, it, any film as a filmmaker has to be personal and as I was working on this film over the years, you check in with it and you say, is this still resonating with me or not? And sometimes projects fall by the wayside and sometimes they continue on. And this one, it, it grew with me on a personal level. I, I was originally drawn to the isolation, the themes of isolation in the film that Ramanujan was going through. I was caretaking for my brother who was going through cancer treatment. And um, he actually wound up writing the music for the film years later after recovery. Um, so it, that has been a personal journey aspect towards it for me that has kept me attached. And, um, and then as the years went on and he did get better, I started to see it as a more hopeful thing and wanting to encourage people to see one another and connect and, and, um, and be present. So, Are you spiritual or, uh, or religious? Um, well, I, I am spiritual. I don't know if I'm religious um, I, I do think that that was one of the interesting themes that I also, as a writer, was really interested in, in addressing, but I didn't want to make a judgment for anybody. I just wanted to open up the question and the dialogue about it. And the more I learned about mathematics um, as an art form, but also just how incredible it all is and that it all is provable and true, it's, uh, it, it does make you wonder about God and, and the universe and everything else. And I just think it's an interesting dialogue. I would never tell somebody what to think. but Because uh, in the movie you do mention that Namagiri, which was the goddess that uh, he prayed to, is the one who's supposed to have revealed all these things to him. And Jeremy Irons, who plays uh, Hardy. How did you get Jeremy Irons? Well, well we first had Dev. And um, Jeremy was excited about the idea of working with Dev. And I think he was very passionate um, about the about the story uh, so when I sat down with him, I think he saw my passion as well. I think he looks for people that are, um, he wanted somebody that was going to go the distance with this film. And, um, so we, we became, he really became a mentor for me in many ways during this filmmaking. I mean, you know, as a filmmaker, this is really my first bigger film on any level. It's still, it's a first film. And Jeremy's done, what, 70, 85, more probably, you know, so we, there's a lot to be learned if you if you can open your <laughs> head to it. Um, but Jeremy had also worked with Ed Pressman, our producer, on Reversal of Fortune. Um, I think that was what it was, and he won an Oscar for that. And he, um, he I gave him a mathematician's apology to read, which was G.H. Hardy's book, and he was, I think, very moved by that. Dave Patel and Jeremy Irons' uh, fathers are CPAs? That I did not know. Interesting. I did not know. 
Well, I was researching, and both uh, Dave Patel and Jeremy Irons, I think, it mentioned that both their fathers were accountants. Interesting. So I don't think either of them have an affinity for numbers. <laughs> <Not at laughs> that, that, that's precisely the point. You know, to, is, isn't it ironic? It is. It is ironic. But I think, you know, what's interesting is we're all kind of artists. I'm a writer, and I... Um, these guys are actors, and, and, and we all had this appreciation for the passion that artists have and these mathematicians that do. And the more time I spend with mathematicians, I, I joke about it. I mean, I've been spending a lot of time with Manjil, um, who won the Fields Medal, uh, and, you know, absolutely brilliant at mathematics, you know, as Jeremy is at acting, as Dev is at acting, and, 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 and but that doesn't mean we're any good at anything else, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> driving a car has been an adventure, <laughs> so... How did you get Stephen Fry? Because he was attached, if I remember correctly. There was another film being made about Raman and Jim by somebody there, else. There was, a, there was a whole bunch of projects, actually. I got a call from the Wall Street Journal probably back in 06 or something or 07, and they said, are you aware of the other seven projects? And I was like, I was like, well, how can I have competing projects about this? Um, but there were, and Stephen had one of those projects. So when I found out that we were really close to actually making the film, I... I reached out to Stephen and I said, "Would you consider joining our 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 production?" And um, he's just such a wonderful man. And he said, "I would be honored and thrilled." And he got on an airplane and flew to Chennai for a weekend, um, literally for a weekend, to be there because he cared so much about being a part of the story and telling the story. And as a small independent film, he's really the first British character that you meet is Sir Francis Spring and it's so nice to have such a character with so much gravity as you know Stephen Fry playing him so which was wonderful and then Stephen was here saw him last night and he watched the movie for the first time and we'd already done a festival or two together but he hadn't seen the whole film and I was very nervous and um, he came out of it and he had some tears in his eyes and it was it was pretty wonderful so. so where in Madras which is now known as Chennai did you shoot well we shot at um, Presidency College um, we it was difficult because you know it's it's 2016 when we shot and or 15 2015 yeah but it's it's certainly not 2000 or it's not 1914 and that's the thing and it's you know we had scenes where we're trying to shoot intimate scenes at night with um, Janaki and, and Ramanujan and their fireworks are going off every five minutes on the beach and um, it was such a a modern city and it's so loud and it's just it's nothing like the pastoral sort of madras of 1914 so it was a real challenge for Luciana Arigi who was our production designer who's amazing and um, but she really had a major challenge to, to recreate that and in fact we wanted to create like an Iyengar Brahmin street and village and we had to travel six hours to find a full street that would work for the shooting where we, we went we went all the way to Kumbakonam which was where he was lived as a child and grew up with Ramanujan so that was kind of just that was unbelievably strange to go to where he grew up to recreate Madras 1914 um, but we really we really wanted to try to be as authentic as possible. We had them wearing nine yard saris. We had them it was everything we could try to do, but it was you know, we are an independent film, so we didn't have um it was fast and furious. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was not fast and furious in the Vin Diesel kind of a way. Um so you said Iyengar, you said Kumbakonam. Did you spend time learning how to pronounce these names, uh Tamil names? I hope I'm saying them close to right. I um no, you know, I, I've i tried at different times. The, the the comedy is in the actually saying Ramanujan's name. I think for years I was afraid to even say it out loud. Um, one time I was being interviewed by the, the Hindu, and the guy said, you, you said that right. How did you say that? And and I said, I don't know. I'm American. He goes, you're American. I thought you were British. It's the same thing. And um, But the British say Ramanujan, which is totally different, and not right so but then I let the actors say it because they were British so you might as well have them say it wrong as you know, so it's, it's tricky I grew up in Madras I still don't say his name right because it is spelled very differently yes. R-A-M-A-N-U-J-A-N yes it, you know, so that that is not. I don't know if it was a spelling error or when, when you know, whoever registered yeah. his birth, because I don't think it's usually spelled that way. At least, you know, oh, my limited I, knowledge. Oh, I, it might not be. I don't know. I. It was wonderful though. I got, we did spend time there, and I did get to visit his home. And um, Manjo was saying, um, the mathematician, um, how when he's at Princeton, you know, people fight over 
space in the room. You know, if it's two people in one office space, it's just terrible. But here's Ramanujan with six people where he's writing formulas that are the most incredible mathematics the world's ever known. You know, it's just, how does that happen? You know? The other thing is, how did you get Arundhati Nag? She usually doesn't act mm -hmm. in too many films because she's busy with the theater group yeah. Rangashankara in Bangalore. So um, I, it's, it's very rare, at least, uh, for her to act. How did you get her to act as Dev Patel's mother in this film? You're catching me on a question here because I can't remember the name of the project that I saw her in. Um, I apologize. I saw her in a film and I just said ah. that might have been. And I, I was blown away. And then I just thought her acting was was just so beautiful. And I, I started doing some research about her and I realized her theater background and that all kind of made sense. And she's kind of an independent film woman that I. Um, I, uh, I reached out to her and I said, would you please consider playing this role? And she did, and she came, and um, she was she was my uh, my center while I was shooting. It was, I mean, I could get emotional talking about her. She's one of my favorite people in the world, so. Talk to us about the mathematicians that helped you in this project, and sure. you've also been touring uh, different schools in this country and working mm -hmm. with the mathematics department and doing with Manjul yeah. Srivastava and Ken Ono. Yes, Ken, Ken Ono is one of the great um, mathematicians in the world right now who's also a Ramanujan expert. Um, you know, I, I, Robert Canigal's biography, first of all, is incredible, and it helps a layman understand philosophically what's behind this mathematics. But beyond that, um, when the time came and I really knew we were going to make the movie, I reached out. Uh, Robert gave me a list of about five mathematicians. I sent out the email. I wondered what the response would be like. Every single one of them wrote me back in one minute. They're so passionate about this. Um, and then Ken actually was on a plane about four days later and flew and met me in London where we were prepping. And he stayed for the better part of our British shoot and worked with the art department with Luciana, making sure that every single formula was written down right. And working with the actors and myself and, and making some subtle changes to the script and making sure everything was accurate. And, um, but m beyond just being accurate, what it did was it gave the actors a sense of trust in the material we were working on so that they didn't have to wonder, like they're just not saying some alien language. They actually know what it is they're talking about. And frankly, it helped me even understand it on, on other levels. So, um, How was it to work with Dave Patel? He's wonderful. Um, Dev came in first, and he he worked with me with the script for a little while. Really, he was very concerned that we made sure that this was a film that would connect with an audience who weren't mathematicians. And I think he really helped at humanizing it. His instincts are incredible, absolutely incredible as an actor. And I think we, we know Dev in a certain way right now um, from the Marigold Hotel movies, and some people know him from Slumdog, but we don't know him as the kind of dramatic actor that we're going to know him in the next year from this film and then later from Lion. And I think he is he's a very, very special talent that um, is going to really surprise people. So I'm absolutely thrilled that he that he joined this film and, and took the chance to do this. He, he worked extremely hard with a dialect coach the whole time and was very cognizant of the responsibility culturally with the film. So I think he did a brilliant job. And, you know, Ramana John was a stout man, and um, he, he looked a little different, and he was awkward. But I think that Dev brought his own physicality to it into the acting performance, where he's a little bit all arms and legs, and he's, it's a different kind of awkwardness. But that's what was important, was that we captured the essence and the spirit of Ramana John, and he does it so beautifully. So I'm excited. I'm excited for people to see it. What do you have next? Oh, me. I, um, I'm circling a couple of different movies, and um, I've got a, a television show with Mark Gordon that we're going out with right now. So, Matt, thank you so much, and best of luck with your film. Thank you. You can also listen to our interview with Professor Freeman Dyson, who worked with Professor Hardy. And in that interview, we talked to him about Ramanujan. You can download this and other podcasts from our website or from iTunes. You can watch our TV show on our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, suggestions or feedback, please feel free to send them to us. We love hearing from you. And as always, thank you for tuning in.